Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Quintero, the mayor of Medellin. Today in GFACT, we, have, we are going to have an amazing conversation with Peter Westerbaca. He's one of the most influential persons in the world, uh, according to the Time magazine, but he is also an entrepreneur that has been part of projects as Angry Birds. Uh, he is also the co-founder or the founder of HP Bazaar, Slash, and many other platforms that connect people and are, are changing education. And this is specifically what we are going to talk about today, about education. But I want to start by saying hi to Peter. And hey. uh, thank you, you for being here to share this space with us and your ideas and thoughts with many people that is connected right now. Hi, Peter. How are you? Yeah, hey, I'm I'm great, and it's uh, it's fantastic to be here. So, uh, of course, it would be even more fantastic if I could be there, uh, you know, uh, with you in in Medellin. I've been there a few times, and uh, you have a beautiful city, and and uh, of course, uh, you know, Colombia is this amazing place. So, hopefully, we can get through this uh, pandemic uh, quickly so that we can meet, uh, you know, face to face as well. But yeah, it's it's really great. Uh, so, thanks for having me. Uh, have you ever been in Medellin, Peter? Yes, I've been in Medellin, I think, uh, maybe three times or something like that. So I've been there a few times. So it's, yeah, oh, no. great place. Uh, how, how is the pandemic going in Helsinki? Uh, I think that we are, uh, we, we're doing okay. So it's, it's uh, we have the, kind of like the lowest numbers in uh, Europe right now, if you look at kind of like the uh, new number of new cases and, and uh, all of that. So I think that it's, it's, uh, Looks to be okay, but uh, you know, uh, you never know. So uh, we're being very, very careful. And uh, I think that for for Finnish people, the social distancing is, uh, you know, easy. That's like pretty much the norm here. So uh, we always like to keep our distance. So I think that that is also uh, uh, helping us uh, contain the pandemic. But yeah, it's it's been uh, uh, going uh, pretty well, and uh, we are now hoping that uh, uh, you know rest of Europe and rest of the world that will get it under control and, and uh, we can move on. But uh, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a tough one and, uh, and we'll, we'll see how quickly we can get through this. In, in Colombia for, for us, it's a little bit harder to, to maintain the social distance, but we're yeah. trying our best and actually Colombia is doing well when you compare it to mm -hmm. other countries. In, yeah. in, in, um, I, I used to change protocol and probably I, I'm not going to go for the question that we prepared before, <laughs> and, but I, I'm sure we're going to have an amazing conversation. How, how do you think uh, talking about education, this pandemic is changing or is going to change the future of, of education? So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think what, that, uh, that uh, it's really uh, always uh, when we have a uh, crisis, like uh, we have a big one now, and I think that it's, uh, it's really, uh, of course, I mean, it's, it's tough and, and, uh, and uh, that's, that's uh, for sure. But, but I also think that uh, there's always uh, opportunity. And, and one thing that uh, I've been uh, talking about a lot is that, uh, you know, if, if I would have said, like, uh, let's say last year before the pandemic that, hey, you know, like we're just going to, you know, know, move to digital and we're going to move to kind of like uh, having everybody online and remote learning and we're going to do that. And it's just going to take like a day or two max. Everybody would tell me that, hey, Peter, you're crazy that, you know, it's impossible. You can't do that in two days. I mean, there are so many problems and so many challenges and it will take, you know, like a year or, you know, at least many months. But now when the pandemic hit, you know, it took uh, here in, in Finland, I think it took like a day or two and we had everybody online remote learning kicked in and and uh, of course it was uh, you know challenging and it's never the same you know to have uh, the online like uh, learning uh, and remote learning happening but uh, we were able to do that and that is the same thing that happened uh, all over the world uh, and i think that this is a good reminder that uh, there are very few things that actually are impossible so i think that then if we think, really decide that hey now we have to do this and we have to do it in a day or two uh, it's possible. So I think that we are now seeing uh, that that everybody were uh, everybody was able to move to uh, call it new ways of learning and and uh, all of that. So uh, so we have learned a lot, and I, I think that's uh, uh, like the the bright side of this, and and uh, that's that's good. And and also shows that uh, you know when you have to, you typically uh, you're able to to kind of like do things. 
uh, I think also that this has accelerated the adoption of new, uh, you know, new tools, new technologies, new ways of uh, doing things. And it's not only in education. I think, of course, uh, how we work and all of that. And also there, I mean, all of these things. I mean, now we're on this, uh, you know, Zoom call and uh, it works just great. And, and uh, a lot of the tools that we've had, you know, at our disposal for a long time, but we didn't really use them because we didn't have to. And now uh, we are. And then we're realizing that, hey, uh, actually, it's not too bad. We can do a lot of things, you know, obviously less travel. I used to travel half the time. And uh, now I haven't been outside of Finland since, you know, a while. And, and I think that, uh, again, uh, we, we can get stuff done. Uh, but I would say, say also that, uh, that said that there is no substitute for uh, like the face-to-face -face meetings and, and all of that. That I mean, there are still a lot of things that, you know, it, it's not uh, uh, the same to just be online. I mean, of course, I would much rather be there, you know, in Medellin right now and, and, uh, and we could have this uh, conversation face-to-face. -face. But, uh, I mean, this works uh, as well. And, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we're learning. Uh, so uh, I would say that the pandemic is also a learning experience for everybody. Yeah. So ed education, especially in countries like Colombia, uh, has to be changed. I'm sure mm -hmm. yeah. it has to happen also. But yes, here we are in a, in a movement uh, about changing education, how to transform education, yeah. especially for little kids uh, since mm -hmm. they are really, really young. And yes. They are these years. But it's hard to change education because usually, as you said, uh, there are many people sometimes that doesn't want the change and sometimes crisis True. like one a, a force. Yeah. But yeah. you were the, the creator of Angry Birds. And mm -hmm. I still remember being almost addicted mm -hmm. to, to that game. I had to stop it because it, it was... I was yeah, using a yeah. playing with it. So, how do you think we can uh, change education? What, what, what is needed yeah. in education? so we make yeah. it more uh, more interesting for 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 the student? Mm -hmm. So, what yeah. I saw many times is, is childs are boring with education. Mm -hmm. So, how what, what do you think? Probably, what ideas are in your mind about that? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, I mean, like uh, being here in, in Finland, I think that uh, uh, we're very uh, uh, proud of our, our kind of educational system because it, it's one of the best, if not the best uh, in the world. And if you look at, you know, starting with early years, you know, the kindergartens and, and all of that. And I think uh, all the way uh, through your education, it's, it's uh, super, super good. And, and one, one thing always, you know, like when I talk to my friends outside of Finland, I ask that, like, hey, do you know which school in Finland is the best school? And then they're like, okay, but how could I know? I haven't even visited. And I said, it's very easy to answer the question. It's the nearest school. So it's the one that is closest to you. And that means that here, every school is very good. So you, as a parent, you don't need to worry about, you know, which school you send your kids to because they're all very good. And I think that this is, uh, you know, one thing that is very important that uh, we provide fantastic education, not just for a few, but for, for all. I think that is very, very important. But then also... Uh, uh, things there that, you know, the teacher job is very appreciated. So uh, every year we have thousands of kids that want to become teachers, but they can't because it's very difficult to get into the university to become a teacher because it's uh, very popular. And uh, actually, uh, you know, university, but also all the teachers, even the kindergarten teachers have a master's degree. So uh, we also have uh, very well uh, like educated teachers. And, and one reason why uh, the teacher job is appreciated is because the teachers are trusted. In Finland, we have no, no school inspectors at all. So there's no inspection or anything like that. I mean, there's random sampling, but there's no uh, inspectors going to the schools and checking that the teachers are doing their job. We trust, that the, te trust the teachers and we're letting them do their job uh, the way they see best. But I think that then uh, what is also very important, I mean, you mentioned Angry Birds. So actually Angry Birds, it wasn't, you know, created like by one person there were like 12 people in the team and i think this is something that is very important you know part of education of course you need to learn your math and your physics and you know like everything but you also need to learn 
what I would call life skills. You know, how do you work with others? So you need to learn, uh, you know, uh, this kind of like teamwork and uh, collaboration, negotiation, communication. And I think that this is also one thing that is uh, uh, very important and uh, kind of like at the center of uh, the education here, that it's learning by doing. It's also learning for life. So it's, it's, uh, you are not learning for tests. You are learning you know, things that are relevant. And, and uh, it's very important that teachers explain why do you need to learn physics? Because it will help you understand the world. Why do you need to learn math? Because probably you, you, know, you need to be able to uh, understand, you know, for example, you know, like how the economy works and you know like it's it's again there's a lot of uh, uh these kind of things so uh, a lot of it's uh, phenomenon based uh, learning so you look at different phenomena you do project based so it's not that it's just like math and physics and music in isolation but it's always in relation to kind of like real world problems and i think this is something that is very very important so it's learning by doing this is something that i i really believe that uh it's the most efficient way to learn. And it's also, I mean, in our working life, and I always encourage people to just go out there and do things because, yes, you will make mistakes and you will not always know exactly how to do things, but you will figure it out. And, you know, after you make a few mistakes, you learn. And actually, if you look at the story of Rovio and Angry Birds, I mean, Angry Birds was not the first or the second or third game. It was the 52nd game, meaning that the team did a lot of learning a lot of games and learn how to make, you know, fantastic games. And then, okay, the 52nd game, of course, you always need a bit of luck, but you also need to kind of like create your own luck. So the 52nd game after, you know, many uh, uh, games before, that then became this big uh, success story of Angry Birds. So, so I think that that's... Um, uh, and then uh, we can also show that because we have this fantastic education as like a foundation, uh, it's... Um, also why we have seen a lot of success in games uh, because our educational system doesn't kill creativity it doesn't kill initiative and i think that uh, this is something that we should always ask ourselves that are we really uh, providing the kind of education for our youth for our young people that will prepare them for life and i think this is something that that's from my perspective the only job of education is really to prepare people for life, prepare them for real world problems. And I think what we always talk about is that uh, we want to make sure that uh, when you go through school, you go through the education, that you become kind of like a person that can, you know, be like a critical and and creative uh, problem solver. And I think this is something that is, is so important that uh, you, you learn skills, you learn life skills, things that are useful. So you're not learning for tests. That's like irrelevant. Of course, you need to perform tests and you need to do well on those. But uh, that's not kind of like the critical thing. The critical thing is that we, are you learning skills that will be relevant, you know, in your job as a mayor of a city, for example? Yeah. So I, I was once in, in Finland and actually mm-hmm. I, I went because uh, Finland is one of the countries with the best education in the world. I think it's the, the mm-hmm. top two or three. I, I think it's, mm-hmm. but it's the first, second or third. Yeah. And, and I was very impressed by, by what you say about how you respect teachers, how, mm-hmm. how teachers, what is the role of teachers in society? Yes. But I also saw that, I'm not sure if it's, still true or not, but all education in Finland is public it's free. Uh, yeah, more or less. Uh, so basically all the way through university, it's free. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, uh, there, yeah. Is there, is there private education for child? Or... There, there, there is, but it's a uh, very, very small uh, part of the education is, is on the private side. So it's, it's, uh, most of the education is, is uh, public. And, and I think that uh, that is also like one thing that is, uh, uh, but it's the case in, in most, of, uh, most of Europe. But, but I think that it's, it's also, uh, 
Uh, then we have some, uh, for example, private uh, kindergartens and things like that, but it's still like the minority. So uh, most of the education is public and uh, free all the way through university. I think that's, that is key because uh, that makes a lot of people in society to be interested on the improvement of education because even mm -hmm. if the richer people or the powerful people has, they have to send their kids to a public education. So uh -huh. it's more uh, probable that this person is going to be interested that education in the country is well-funded mm -hmm. and it, ha it has all the resources it needs and obviously the best teachers ever. And the another thing is that you don't have uh, people looking uh, to the teacher, as you say, like trying to see if they are doing right or wrong, mm -hmm. but you yeah. are the, the parents, the fathers are involved in education. It's yes, a, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's, it's, it's about trust. I think that it's at all levels of society that you have to trust people. And you trust the teachers, the teachers trust the parents, the kids trust the teachers, everybody. There's really, I think trust is a very important element uh, for that to work. And, and then you say, okay, we, we, don't, kill, we don't kill creativity. Mm -hmm. And actually, we are in a, in a, in a forum. The fact is about creativity, art, culture, about mm -hmm. technology too. And you have been creating these amazing communities that are referenced around the world, how to connect entrepreneurs, how to create crea creators. And how do you think, or how do you think, um, a country like Medellin, like Colombia, or a city like Medellin, should move forward uh, in the creation of an ecosystem. For example, Medellin wants to be a, a software valley for the world. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what is your recommendation for cities or for mayors like me that want that needs to implement policies to change the the path, the way we need changes here? Yeah, I, I think that that it's actually also there. I would say that uh, learning by doing uh, applies. So I think that is a very good uh, way. Uh, you know, so we need to do things. And and uh, here I, I think that um, uh, if I look at uh, you know many cities around the world, uh, uh, there is uh, you know the successful ones are the ones that are going out there doing things, learning. And and I think uh, also one thing that. Uh, uh, always say and uh, uh, that it's uh, the job of us, you know, slightly older people, uh, you know, uh, to make sure that the governments and uh, the older people stay out of the way while the young people change the world. And I think that it's very, very important that we uh, we empower uh, the young people and and we basically uh, uh, enable them and we kind of remove the obstacles so that we really put them in charge. And we have a wrong experience here in Finland. We have uh, had the students and the young people run, you know, uh, these, uh, you know, startup uh, teams and groups at the universities. We have student run uh, accelerators, incubators, student run VCs. And, and when we say that we put the students and the young people in charge, it's really true. We really do that. That it's not, you know, that, oh, let's listen to the youth and then we do something else. But it's really like that. We really put them in charge. We give them actually very big responsibility. And, and I think that this is also, and we don't expect them to, you know, uh, that it will be perfect right away. But it's again, this learning by doing that, hey, you know, why don't you go out there, you know, build this ecosystem, build this startup, build this. And I think that we have had fantastic experience, uh, like, uh, let's say, results and, and, uh, and really uh, seeing that, uh, uh, there's been a massive, massive change because of this. And, and I think that it's something that works everywhere. I think it's pretty universal. Uh, but we always have this tendency that, hey, okay, you know, the young people, what do they know? And, you know, like we need to have uh, some people with gray hair and, you know, like more experience that, you know, let's put them in charge because, hey, we can't trust that the young people know what to do. And actually, the young people don't always know what to do. But, you know, after a few uh, failures, a few mistakes, they will know. And, and I think that uh, that is really one thing that I believe that is important that we 
empower uh, the young people and and we give them the responsibility and hey you know go out there and make stuff happen i was actually a couple of weeks ago um, congratulating the the young people that were in charge actually uh, mm -hmm. students that were uh, with their leadership trying to help the other children other children huh? that were uh, facing the difficulty because of the pandemic and I'm sure the, the, the energy, their ideas, the, the power they have to change the world is incredible. But yeah. the world many times is built for the old people, for, mm -hmm. for the old yeah. rules. So I, I think I love that idea of mm -hmm. putting the young people in charge. I, I just love that idea. I think our goal as mayors, as, uh, mm -hmm. as governors in general, is to remove those the barriers. Yes, so absolutely. Do what they yeah. have to do because they are yes. the ones that are thinking about climate change, are thinking about yes, absolutely, thinking about education, new education, a different mm -hmm. education. Uh, so, what would you do, like, to remove the the barriers, the uh, to to solve the gaps? And yeah. let them be, be in charge. Yeah, I think that I think that one one thing uh, also. So uh, removing the barriers is is definitely like one thing that that needs to be done. But I think also uh, there that it's very important to have uh, uh, role models. So I think that it's also. Uh, I mean, if I look at the games industry here in Finland, so uh, after we had the success with Angry Birds, we have seen many many more success stories and some much bigger, like Supercell, I mean, they, uh, Ilkka, uh, the founder and CEO, you know, they looked at Provio and Angry Birds and said, okay, if those guys can do that, then we can as well. And then they built Supercell and okay, they had a 10 billion exit to Tencent. And after that, small giant games and they had uh, a bit over a billion uh, exit to Zynga. And, you know, like, so there's a lot of success following the success. So I, I really believe that we need to celebrate uh, the success stories, and we need to highlight the, uh, you know, uh, these role models. So I think that is one uh, important part. That once you have one success story, you can expect to see many, many more. And then uh, maybe on this, like removing the barriers. I think that many of them are actually like these kind of mental barriers that uh, people don't see themselves. That hey, you know, I can't do this. Here. Nobody has done this before. So we need a few crazy people that say that, hey, great, it hasn't been done before. So I will make this happen here in Medellin. And, you know, it's going to be like the most amazing thing ever. And I think that this is, this is really important. And I, I mean, as I said before, I've been to Medellin and I think that you have uh, fantastic talent. You have fantastic universities. Uh, so there is no reason why you wouldn't see, you know, that kind of success. And I think that... Uh, uh, it's uh, it's just uh, kind of like a question of time, but you really need to encourage uh, the young people, the entrepreneurs that, hey, you can do something much bigger and there is no reason why not. I always share, you know, like the Rovio and the Angry Birds story that actually started as a student project. So uh, uh, again, and then now it's, of course, like all over the place and it's one of the, uh, it was the fastest growing consumer brand ever. So I think that it's, it's again, uh, you know, if three young guys in Helsinki can create Angry Birds, why couldn't then three young guys or three young girls in Medellin do something even bigger? And I think that this is the kind of thinking that we need to encourage. And I think that this is also something that, uh, you know, this kind of entrepreneurial mindset, uh, you can already learn, you know, like in kindergarten. So it, it kind of like starts very early. But I think for me, this kind of like uh, entrepreneurial mind and entrepreneurship is all about doing. So we need to encourage people that, hey, don't be afraid of doing things. When you try new things, more often than not, you will you know, not be successful and you will actually fail. And then you will fail again, fail again. And eventually you, have to be, you will be successful. You learn how to do it. And I think that that's maybe uh, the most important thing. So we need to lead by example. And, and also, you know, as the mayor of the city, of course, encouraging people that, hey, you know, of course, we can do anything here in Medellin. And, and you can. And I think that this is, uh, and then maybe also one thing and uh, why I'm like so, so, you know, happy to be here is that I think that we can work together. I mean, there's so many things that we can do, you know, again, you know, uh, Medellin and, uh, you know, uh, here in Finland, we can 
connect with you know different cities, different ecosystems, and and you know Colombia and Finland. There, there's a lot of things that we can uh, you know do together, and we can basically compare notes, look at best practices, and I think that there's always when you work with others, you will learn a lot, and I think that is uh, always super super effective. And what, what do you think has to be the role of companies? Uh, in Medellin, we have a strong mm -hmm. uh, industry environment. Mm -hmm. Yes. But so, sometimes, uh, like all industries or traditional industries are also a barrier. Uh, mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't allow the, the, the movement mm -hmm. the way up. Uh, yeah. Sometimes many entrepreneurs also are key to, to improve, to create this innovate, innovative ecosystem. Uh -huh. But what would be the role of traditional companies? Uh, yeah. in I, I, I think that, uh, that uh, also there, I mean, there's a lot of uh, fantastic ideas, uh, of course, in, in the companies and with the people working there. And I think that in one way uh, uh, to kind of like then encourage uh, growth and, and innovation and uh, all of that is to uh, work with the companies and also uh, for them to do spin-offs or, or then have like uh, internal incubators of new ideas, new businesses. I think that that is also, uh, and, and, and I mean, you have the uh, uh, in and these kind of environments in, 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 uh, in uh, Medellin. So I think that then involving the companies and making it uh, easy and actually encouraging people within the companies that, okay, why don't you, uh, you know, take your idea and maybe you want to start, you know, a new business, uh, a new company. And I think that it's actually good uh, for the companies because, I mean, first you would think that, oh, but then, you know, some of our best people will leave. Uh, but actually, I think that uh, uh, you will attract the best people if you uh, enable this kind of thing happens so i think that you can always find you know like uh, uh, a win for both sides in that you know the entrepreneur at a traditional company if you will and i think it's also a great way for the uh, traditional companies that if you have then uh, startups smaller companies popping up kind of like around then there's always the opportunity then to go and acquire and get that kind of idea into your business from the startups from the smaller companies so i think that that is a sign of a healthy ecosystem that uh, you have small companies, sometimes those small companies get bought by the bigger companies, and sometimes then from the bigger companies, you have spin-offs and you have people leaving and starting, uh, you know, new companies. So it, you could say that you have a constant uh, coming and going, you know, people are, are uh, joining, people are leaving, and I think that it's uh, important to create that kind of like flexibility that uh, if you look at now, uh, the world, uh, I don't think that uh, in many places we, we don't have this concept that, oh, I'm going to go and work for this company for life. I think that people are, okay, I'm going to be there for a while, then I do something else. Maybe I start my own company, I go back to a bigger company. And I think that uh, then really creating an environment where we have a lot of uh, uh, kind of like, uh, flexibility like that. And I think that uh, there uh, you can have... Uh, uh, yeah, put in place more flexible policies. I, I guess that a lot of that would be de decided like national level as well. But uh, but anyway, uh, it, it's um, more flexibility. I, I think is always uh, a good thing. And, and I would like you to to help us, or in a better way to say, to use this space. A lot of people, especially young people is looking at you, admire you, and they were really waiting a lot of time to be in this conference. This mm -hmm. to do. I would like you to give them advice. What would be your three yeah. advice? Uh, yeah, I have very, I always have the same, yeah, always the same advice. So I think the starting point is that, uh, you know, it, it was also like, uh, if you look uh, with uh, Robbie and Angry Birds and how that started. So it actually started with this uh, game making competition. Uh, that I organized uh, all the way back in 2003. And then Niklas Kim and Jarno, so the three guys from Aalto University here, they won that uh, like game-making competition. And they came to me and asked that, okay, we won this competition with students here at Aalto, what should we do? And then I told them that you should do what you love to do. And it was very clear that they loved 
okay, playing games, but also making games. So I said, okay, start a company to do what you love. And I think that this is the best and most important advice, uh, you know, I can give that, you know, do what you love to do. Because I think that when we look at companies uh, that, uh, you know, have fantastic products, and we all know we use these products and services, you can tell if the people working at that company, if they love what they do, then the products, the services, they're always like much better. So you can really like tell. And I think that this is something that is really important that, you know, really go out there and do what you love to do. And it's, it's um, uh, and then, you know, uh, if you don't love what you do, then I always say that, okay, then probably you're doing the wrong thing and, you know, you should think about doing something else. But it, it's, re- it's so important. And I think that that is, uh, you know, and, and then maybe besides then, uh, you know, doing what you love to do, I mean, that is, and that, it's not just for young people. I think it applies for all of us that that's what we should always strive for. Uh, so that's, uh, that's important. But then, then also uh, that don't be afraid of, uh, you know, going out there and doing new things. Because, uh, you know, what is the worst thing that will happen uh, or could happen? Okay, you might fail. But then, you know, like, uh, so what? Then, you know, you try again. And I think this is something that we shouldn't be afraid of doing new things. We shouldn't be afraid of then, uh, you know, initially failing. Uh, that is like normal. And there's, that's like no big deal. Uh, I think that, that uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit like when we're really young and we're learning to walk. I mean, we just, you know, we try, we fall down and we try again. And okay, uh, before we know it, we know how to walk and then, you know, we learn how to run. And then, you know, like, it's, it's, uh, so it's, it's um, I think that that is, is really, really important that you have the courage and you're not afraid of trying new things. I think that is really, really important. And typically young people, you know, that is also why, why young people are once you know changing the world and 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 doing this because they're typically they don't know any better so they go out there and do it and try things and i think that and then you know as i said you know many times you're not immediately successful but then you try again and every time you try something you you learn something and again coming back to this learning by doing that it's uh, really important uh, that you uh, go there, go out there and do things. Because, uh, again, uh, I think many of us, and, and especially if you work in a bigger organization, then you t- get this tendency that you just like overanalyze and you just think and think and you uh, plan and you basically, uh, then the end result is that you never end up doing anything. And once you finally do something, then the market has already moved and you're like too late and, and like all of that. So. Yeah, don't be afraid and then try to figure out, you know, a way to do what you love to do. Wonderful. I, I write down this. Do what you love to do. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Try again. Learn yeah. something. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and to politicians, mm-hmm. what would be your advice to politicians, especially after this pandemic? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, I think that it's it's really important that we uh, don't, we don't, don't yeah. be <laughs> yeah no, but I, I think that yeah yeah, yeah but I, I, it doesn't matter yeah. that I put here <laughs> yeah yeah, but I think I, I think that it's really um, you know if if we look at um, uh, I, maybe, maybe my advice, you know, to actually to all politicians everywhere is that that uh, and and it's you know like very tough advice, but it's it's kind of that do the right thing and don't worry about the next election. But I mean the the, the problem for politicians is that okay, there's always the next election, next election. and then, uh, you have this uh, that oh we know what we need to do, but we need to win the election. So I think this is you know like the big problem that we have, you know, and it's it's uh, politics everywhere. It's the same problem that, you know, the governments know what they need to do and it's not always popular, but that means that then they can't win the next election. So I don't know how we can uh, solve that. It's like a global problem and it's not you know, uh, you know, uh, limited to, say, Colombia or Finland or the U.S. or, you know, something like that. So I think that we all know that uh, it's, uh, it's complicated. But I, I think also uh, one thing that uh, don't underestimate the people and the people's ability to understand. So I think that uh, 
maybe that is also one thing that we have to trust the people and sometimes we have to make tough decisions okay so be it then let's do those tough decisions and i think that uh, i i maybe i'm naive and, and you know like uh, all that but i still think that if you do the right thing uh, you will also win the election so i think that it's maybe maybe also that we have to get back to that kind of uh, way of doing uh, politics and i think politics i mean uh, it's it's also uh, it's about uh, taking care of uh, uh, our, uh, you know, it's taking care of the interest of the people. I mean, and the people, all of us. So I think that it's it's also uh, uh, we need to get to that kind of uh, situation where where you know again uh, we have to trust uh, that people are trying to do their best. You know, even if they're politicians and uh, and all of that. So I think that you know that is. Uh, one thing that I, I think is important, and uh, and then I think we're also from uh, uh, you know like the big picture that we need to trust uh, that people actually understand that uh, yes sometimes we have to make tough decisions and uh, it's you know it is what it is and and uh, you know it's always very easy to say these things but I, I also know that it's it's not so easy to to kind of like uh, make that real but uh, I like to believe that uh, it's Amazing. So, Peter, um, we are arriving almost to the end of the of, of this chat, uh, but I definitely I have to talk about community because mm -hmm. you are yes. the creator of amazing communities. Mm -hmm. So, what what is the power of community and and how to push or to mm -hmm. yeah yeah power people to to be in communities. Yeah, I, I think that it's it's uh, from my my perspective, it's kind of like very simple, very uh, kind of like uh, easy. Uh, but I've been doing many of these uh, branded uh, communities, and and uh, and I think that uh, it it it's uh, very important that you create uh, kind of like a common uh, purpose, and also like a purpose uh, that you know things that uh, have a meaning. So I think uh, all of us want to work on meaningful things and we want to contribute to a bigger cause so i think that then uh, you know you have to define that cause and and you have to make it very easy for people to join and easy for people to contribute easy for people to to kind of like be part of it and i think this is uh, uh i think this is you know for smaller groups or for you know companies for nations for cities you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's always that you have to have that uh, course that you are, the, this kind of greater course that you are working for. And I think that then also, also that uh, uh, then uh, people always, I mean, it's a very human uh, like uh, characteristic that you and all of us, we want to be part of something bigger and we want to conform. So then uh, I think that. Uh, that is very important when uh, kind of building communities that, uh, uh, you know, again, let's say that now we want to make, you know, the uh, Medellin the center of gravity when it comes to entrepreneurship and startups and, you know, fantastic education. And then we basically define that and, and uh, then uh, we go out there and make that happen together. And, and uh, I think also it, it's, it's, um, uh, we have actually a word in the Finnish language uh, called uh, talkot, and and it's a bit like a barn racing or something. So I mean, if I want to have my, let's say, I need okay. some help with uh, paint the uh, my house or something like that, then I invite a few friends a few over. Friends. We paint the house, and once we're done, maybe we have a barbecue, we have a few beers, but nobody expects to get paid. I mean, it's just like you're helping your friends, and you know, my friends then call me and hey, we need. Uh, I don't know, fix the fence or we need to do something. And then, you know, I go there and I help and then we get it done and then, you know, barbecue a few beers and we're like done. And I think that this is this is something that uh, has helped, you know, in, in Finland, we created Linux, uh, MySQL, a lot of the big open source projects. And I think that it's uh, very uh, kind of deeply rooted in the culture also that there is this... Uh, uh, ability to work together for this kind of like greater course and everybody understands that uh, then you know you it's not always the kind of like the financial uh, reward but it's like uh, uh, 
you know, it's, it's also, uh, you know, it's cold here in Finland in the winter. So then if people don't have a house, you know, they will die. So then, you know, it's of course in the community that then it's best uh, to make sure that everybody has a house. So, okay, I can help my friend go there, fix his house, and now, you know, he'll survive the cold winter. So I think that there is kind of like maybe that kind of uh, uh, you know, history and, and tradition that we just like had to do that. And, and I think that this is, this is something that is, is very, very important that, uh, of course, all of us want to do meaningful things. And, and I think that this is, uh, again, if you ask any entrepreneur that, okay, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to change the world. And, and I think that this is uh, what all of us actually want to do. But then we shouldn't be afraid of saying that out loud. Hey, you know, that's what we're going to do. And I think that it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's uh, very important to find that uh, course when you are building uh, any, any kind of community. That why are we here? What are we trying to do? And then you make it very easy to join uh, the course and, and kind of go make it happen. Well, Peter, it has been an inspiring chat. Uh, thank you very much. I, I hope you come soon to, to Colombia. I'm sure yeah. everyone that is connected has the same impression than me, that you are so inspiring, your ideas about education, community, uh, the, your trust, especially on the young people and their power to change the world and this amazing invitation to be part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what we exactly need at this time after this pandemic. We, yes. we want uh, a better world. We, we, want, we don't want to go back to the past. Exactly. To a better future. We want to take this as an opportunity for the future. In Medellin, Peter, we're working on, on that, on helping or in creating this as a software ballet for the world mm -hmm. to put the young uh, in charge, uh, to innovate, to be entrepreneurs. I was elected actually in a, in a quite different political platform as an independent uh, thinker about changing the economy from the old economy mm -hmm. to a new economy. And talking about climate change and the new cause, the, the, the big purposes of the world right now. And I would love to have you here with a slash, with a platforms to connect people here, not just in Medellin, but in Colombia. We really appreciate your time, your ideas, and, and we are really, really Thank you. Really, really happy to have you here and hope you, uh, you come soon to Colombia. Yeah, I promise that I will be in Colombia uh, as soon as we get through the pandemic and uh, I will bring a few of the young people from Finland with me so we can have uh, the young people of Medellin and the young people of Finland working together and then we don't need to worry about the thing. We, we do the same. We are going to send good. people to Finland and when you come here I'm gonna invite you to, pay, to paint my house. So. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. As okay. long as we have a fantastic barbecue and a few beers after, so then it's oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Peter, thank you very much and thank you to the government of Colombia and the Ministry of Culture that create this space and to all the people of GFACT. Uh, this has been an amazing conversation and an amazing forum for, for everyone. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you.